Hey everyone, welcome back to Mike's Final Experience. Thank you all so much for being with me here today. I appreciate each and every one of you so very, very much. Today, super excited to share with you my thoughts and my review on really a 1972 iconic, and I do mean iconic, of really at that time in 1972, prior to this album, a yet to be discovered English group called Humble Pie. When they released this, their fifth album, Smokin', it really took off and became uh, a really kind of like a household type group back in the time uh, of the night, early 1970s. There was a lot of really neat things going on in this time of rock and roll, early 70s, and Humble Pie was certainly part of it. An iconic 1972 release. We're going to be taking a look and see what Analog Productions has done with this audiophile repress of really a 1972 iconic classic album, Humble Pie Smokin'. Let's get into it. A little bit about the band. Humble Pie was formed in 1969. Steve Marriott and Peter Frampton, both coming off gigs with other uh, groups, came together and really uh, started. They were the two real instrumental uh, folks that really started Humble Pie. Of course, they did have um, Greg Ridley on bass and backing vocals and Jerry Shirley on drums. And that was really uh, the start of, of Humble Pie. And as we talked about, uh, Smokin' is the fifth album, and just prior to this album coming out in 1972, and well, actually before they even started to record this album, Peter Frampton left the band, which really kind of uh, turned Humble Pie in a little bit different direction. Humble Pie uh, replaced Peter Frampton with Clem Clemson, uh, lead guitarist and vocalist. And, and that really, uh, you know, worked out to be quite good for Humble Pie, in particular uh, when this album was recorded and when it was released in 1972. Uh, it reached number six on the Billboard uh, Top 200 uh, when it was released. It had very, very uh, excellent uh, reviews at that time, did very well in the UK, UK and Australia as well. So really Humble Pie, this being their fifth album, this really was the iconic album for them in really getting, uh, at least over here in the United States, was really a big, uh, a, a huge album for them and had some great uh, uh, success with that, uh, in particular when they were over here touring and supporting and promoting the album Smokin'. The biggest hit on the album is 30 Days in the Hole. That really was the really huge successful song off this album. But to me, and we'll talk about it as we get into the review, um, I think there's some other songs on there that are as equally as good. Not to say that 30 Days in the Hole is not a fantastic song, it is. It's a great song, one of my favorite, my all time favorite, uh, very likely from Humble Pie and certainly Humble Pie's most successful song uh, was 30 Days in the Hole. But I think on this album, there's some fantastic uh, cuts that are just absolutely worth listening to. And, and I'll be honest with you, if you're not familiar with Humble Pie, and maybe a lot of you are probably a little too young or hadn't even been born yet at the time, so you may not even know, you know who Humble Pie uh, actually uh, is. This is a great album to uh, get acquainted with and vet them out. And I'll tell you a couple, three songs as we get into the review that would be good for you to listen to, to vet them out. Uh, because like I say, I think there's some fantastic songs on this album. Well, let's go ahead and take a look and see what Analog Productions has done with this iconic 1972 album by Humble Pie, Smokin'. Analog Productions has been known for, and at least from my standpoint and in my opinion, the albums that they've been repressing uh, and redoing have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, in particular, uh, not just with the sound, they've been great there obviously, but with the renditions uh, of the album covers, they have just 
done a phenomenal job. Um, so let's take a look at this and see what Analog Productions has done. Uh, this is a $40 record. Uh, it's a 33 RPM, 180 gram vinyl uh, record. We'll take a look at that here in a second. But this cover, uh, Stoughton tip-on printing type jacket, is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's a gatefold, uh, and I hope I can show that to you without uh, letting you have a lot of glare. This is photos uh, of the uh, recording session when the album was being recorded. Uh, incredibly fantastic. Uh, the back side of the album, which talks a little bit, obviously gives you the listing of the sound, of, of the songs, uh, the group. Just, I think they're just doing with their album covers. Uh, they're just simply phenomenal. Uh, I, I just can't even begin to tell you how wonderful it is. And when you really consider your $40, you know, obviously we're after the sound and the vinyl, obviously, but boy, I tell you what, they're just doing a fantastic job with these stout and tip on gatefold type jackets that, that they are doing. Let's quickly just take a look at the uh, vinyl. Of course, it's 180 gram. The mastering uh, was done, remastering I should say, was done by Kevin Gray uh, at Coherent. Um, what he did is he took a, a half inch uh, flat copy of the original master tape and remastered it from that Hope you can see that without a lot of glare. Uh, originally released on the A&M label. Um, absolutely fantastic work. Um, they also, on the inside, and and, and they do this, uh, they give you a little bit of a pamphlet on, uh, this one here is on their UHQRs. I, I gotta tell you what, I am pumped for Katie Light. I was saddened when it was delayed, but I am just super pumped to hear that album one of my favorite and then of course you have a uh, a little flyer that tells you about a lot of the releases that they're that they're doing but really for me and in my opinion for the forty dollars that we pay and the quality of the jacket that we are receiving uh you know 180 gram uh vinyl and and one thing that i've always noted and and those of you that have watched my videos for some time will know this I'm just very, very impressed with the quietness uh, of the vinyl that uh, Analog Productions is using. Is, is using. Uh, you're getting your music, whatever it might be, in this case, Smokin uh, by Humble Pie, you're getting this incredibly great music coming off a very black background. And I can't tell you, but that adds so much, at least it does for me, uh, to the sound of these incredibly iconic albums. Let's go ahead and jump in and do a review of the music on Humble Pie Smokin' Analog Productions. So I gotta really kinda tell you a little bit of a funny uh, about this album when I got it just a few days ago. And of course, uh, when I do my reviews, I try to listen to these albums at least five, six, seven different times. The only version of this album that I had previous to the Analog Productions uh, release that I have here was a CD. And while it sounds good, it's I've always felt that it sounds very thin. And so anyway, when I got the album and put it on, I, I was listening to it and I usually turn the volume to kind of where I basically listen to all of my albums and and just started listening uh, to the album. I, I really don't take notes until I've listened to it maybe three, four, five times. Then I'll sit down and maybe do critical listening and start taking notes uh, for my review uh, to present to you. And so my first time listening to this album, it was really interesting because, and just please understand, I just was coming off of the video that I did depicting some of the music that really influenced me to make the purchase of the Wilson Audio Watt Puppies. And so I just was, you know, it's kind of been a chaotic uh, few weeks and I was just basically just sit down, somewhat had a, a small head cold when I first started listening to this album. 
And to be honest with you, my first time through in listening to it, I thought, okay, this sounds good. Um, certainly a lot warmer uh, than the CD, but really wasn't overly uh, too impressed initially. Well, I came back the very next day and listened to the album again and turned it up. I gotta tell you what, as I go through this review with you and we talk about it, the, the key to this album, and, and this album, I perceive this to be hard rock. I mean, especially released in 1972, th this to me is what a good hard rock album uh, was for that time. You know, I, I, that, that would be my interpretation. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. But I kind of attribute this album to hard rock. Not every song is a head-banging hard rock song by any means. There's actually a couple of ballads in here that are fantastic. But it, to me, it was a hard rock song. So I turned it up. And when I did that, the second time go around, listening to this album, it was kind of like, oh my heavens. Drums, guitars, harmonica. Uh, Steve Merritt plays a, a harmonica as well. Uh, the bass guitar percussion just came to life when the volume was turned up and, and and that's how i listened to this album from there on out and as i began third fourth time listening fifth time whatever it might be writing my notes for this review um, it the volume level was up so if you purchase this album if you listen to this album crank it up it needs to be cranked up it begs to be cranked up uh, and I tell you what, Kevin Gray, uh, and we'll get into this a little bit more, but Kevin Gray did a fantastic job on mastering this album. Okay, Humble Pie, Smokin', side one, first song on the album, Hot and Nasty. Now, this is a great rock and roll song, one of, one of the better songs on the album, in my opinion. It, it's very good guitar, very good drum licks, vocals are good on this album. Turn it up. You gotta hear it, it sounds excellent. Uh, when I compare this to the CD, the CD is just thin. This is very full bodied, warm, and just, it's, there's just so much detail and so much uh, warmth on that bottom end. It just sounds natural. And that's really the first thing that I noticed on the second go around in listening to this album when I turned it up was just how wonderful, warm, everything just bloomed. All the instruments, the vocals just bloomed. Second song on side one, uh, The Fixer. This is another great rock and roll song. It has great guitar licks, great sounding drums uh, in this song. Uh, third song on side one, You're So Good To Me. This is gonna be one of the songs that I'm going to tell you to vet out if you're not familiar with Humble Pie or the album Smokin'. This is really, it's a kind of a, I don't know, acoustic type ballad, if you will. Uh, it just sounds absolutely stunning. Oh, it gets going. It's not just slow and mellow throughout. It gets going. It's a great song, but this would be a good one to vet Humble Pie out and the album Smokin' if you're not familiar with it. Um, just an excellent sound on this track. Uh, particularly on the vocals and the drums are really the star of that song. Uh, moving over to uh, song four on side one. Come on, everybody. Great guitar intro on this. Excellent, excellent vocals. Good, excellent, full-bodied sound. Top to bottom is excellent. Nothing's overdone. Nothing's overblown. The bottom end's not boomy, bloaty, or anything like that, and the top end's not edgy in any way, shape, or form. Excellent balance from top to bottom. Track five, last song on side one, Old Time Feeling. This is yet another song that I think would be really, really wise uh, if you're unfamiliar with Humble Pie, if you're unfamiliar with the album uh, Smokin', this would be one to vet it out with. I think it's a fantastic song. Uh, piano entry, excellent, wonderful, sounds incredible. Vocals on this song sound absolutely stunning. Uh, Clem Clemson is actually, rather than Steve Marriott, Clem Clemson on this song is the lead vocalist, and it just sounds great. He's got a very, very nice voice. Uh, there's also really good guitar riffs in this song, uh, along with harmonica, and really 
I can hear a mandolin in here. I can't so much on the CD, but on this album, I can hear the mandolin. It just sounds fantastic. You got to hear it. Yet another song that you really should vet the album out if you're unfamiliar with Humble Pie and the album Smoking. Moving over to side two, uh, 30 Days in the Hole. Most iconic, most popular song by Humble Pie. Certainly the, the most popular song on Smokin'. Uh, incredible song, and I and I agree, it's fantastic. It's it's one of my favorites. Fantastic, fantastic song. Uh, vocals, drums, and guitars. Everything has super super nice detail with wonderful balance, top to bottom. Um, second song on side two, Road Runner. You need to turn it up. You've really got to get the volume up and listen to it because it's really the way it was meant to be heard anyway. And it just sounds stunning. Uh, detail, top to bottom, balance and weight and extension. It's just a great, great song. Roadrunner, second song on side two. On side uh, two, third song, I Wonder. Another fantastic, fantastic song. Listen to the song, vet it out, love it. Uh, great guitar solo along with Harmonica by Steve Marriott. The bass guitar is also very good sounding. Tons of detail on this track. Super, super good track. Uh, last song, song four on uh, side two, Sweet Peace and Time. Very, very nice song. Excellent song. Probably, in my opinion, not as good as the others on the song, but yet it sounds great. It's a good song, uh, but the sound on it is very good. Uh, it really starts immediately with a drum roll, with, with a drum riff entrance onto this song uh, following I Wonder. It really just sounds great. Great guitar work by Clemson and Marriott. This is a super fun song with great balance and vocals along with the instruments. Very good song. I don't, I'm not trying to downplay that in any way, shape, or form. It's a very good song, but I think the others on the song on the album are 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 better. One of my least favorites, but it's a very good song, nonetheless. In conclusion, Analog Productions, in my opinion, has done a fantastic job in reproducing an incredible gatefold album cover, uh, remastering an incredible 1972 iconic album. Kevin Gray's done a fantastic job. Uh, sound quality is absolutely excellent on this album. And I really tell you what, just because I believe that it is good hard rock and roll, you want to turn this album up. This is really the way it was meant to be heard anyway when they made this record. Um, turn the volume up and you will be rewarded with unbelievable sonics. This is a great sounding album. Drums come to life, vocals come to life, guitar riffs, harmonica, all keyboards. Uh, it just absolutely sounds wonderful, in particular when you get that volume up top to bottom resolution is just excellent. Balance is wonderful. Uh, very, very warm, very full bodied sound. Uh, much better than, to me, the Tinny CD. Uh, really, really an excellent job by Analog Productions. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I appreciate each and every one of you so very, very much. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. Greatly appreciate that. We have got some great content coming down the line. A lot of great music is being released on vinyl. And yes, even on CD and SACD, in fact, I'm just going to be doing a video on some of the analog productions, and there's not that many out currently, uh, of the SACDs of the Atlantic 75 series that they're doing. I want to share that with you, hoping to get a couple more of those uh, before I get that, that video going. But really, the ones that I have got on SACD from Atlantic 75 are just um, fantastic. I want to share that with you. Please leave comments in the comment section below. Love hearing from you. Thanks to you. Uh, it really it really matters to me, uh, your comments. I appreciate your, your thoughts, your insights. Uh, a lot of you have shared information with me about 
some of these people and groups that we have talked about, even some of the equipment that we've talked about, that has just really been so helpful to me. So thank you so much for doing that. Please continue to, to put those comments in the comment section below. Until next time, have a great day.